When people ask me, what is it about the West that intrigued me, I ask them, how much time do you have? There's so much about the West that is intriguing. The vast landscapes, the beauty, the ruggedness, the solitude, the variety of species. The fact that the West in many places, at least here in the Northern Rockies, still has a lot of undeveloped lands. You get a chance to get away from what I would call the hustle and bustle. You get a chance to go and explore. You, you share the landscape with other species like grizzly bears and wolves and mountain lions and elk and deer and things that really require a sense of wildness. When I was a kid growing up, I, I had no way to relate to what the West was like. So I'd go to my high school library and I'd read all the magazines about hunting the West, hunting the West. And I still remember my senior year in high school when me and all my buddies are standing around talking about, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And I threw out there, well, someday I'm moving to Montana. And they all looked at me like, you lost your mind? Uh, it took me a while to get here, but I knew that Montana was going to be part of my life. And the funny part is, I came to Bozeman, Montana because my wife wanted to go fishing for our honeymoon. And we did, and the fishing was fabulous for 10 days. And on our way home, she looked at me and said, I'm moving here, you coming with? And as they say, the rest is history. When we came here, we realized what an amazing, valuable place it was. So if we're gonna be here, we're gonna do our best to contribute to conservation, to access to public lands. And that was over 30 years ago. Here we are today. I often get asked the story or the question, how do I get your job? Or how did you end up in this job? And I did not decide to become somebody who produces media just as a, a big plan. I'd spent a lot of my time in the nonprofit world, donating my time for a lot of groups, some national, some regional, some local. And I saw that there are certain limitations about what a nonprofit group can do because of the confines of their nonprofit charitable status. And so my mind started thinking about how, how can you do this differently? With, with the way that media works, how, how can you craft a different message? And just over here in, in my house, uh, it was 2005, my son Matthew is 15, and I was recovering from a really rare liver condition. And I was lamenting about how outdoor media did not reflect what I saw hunting to be, about the food aspects, the conservation aspects. And Matthew looked at me and said, well, Dad, we could do better than that. I said, yeah, right, that's why I'm here on the couch and they're on TV. And somehow he convinced my wife to buy all kinds of production gear. And we spent three years filming each other, uh, friends filming us, us filming friends. And Matthew was very handy with cameras and editing software and he put together what's called the sizzle reel. Everyone laughed at us, said, oh, good luck with that public land self-guided thing. And so I sold all my cameras. I got out of it. I said, well, it was worth a try. Isn't going to work. And then a friend of mine, Mark Pierce, who owns Warm Springs Productions, made an offer to me that they'd produce our show if I would do this public plan thing. When we started our first TV show, it was called On Your Own Adventures. And I was as green as anything. The whole behind the scenes of how you put it together, how you tell a story, how you write a script, how you adapt when you get out in the woods and the, and the elk haven't read the script. It was a learning experience to the highest degree. But I embraced that because I realized I never give myself the option to quit. I don't quit and I knew that I was gonna be in this for the long haul. I understood business, but I didn't understand media production. Because in my other life, I spent 33 years as a tax accountant, as a CPA. I sold my partnership interest in our CPA firm. I had another business that uh, administered 
qualified retirement plans. I've sold both of those. And now this is what I do as my passion, as my daily life. When I think about On Your Own Adventures, the thing I'm probably most proud of is that we took an idea, self-guided public land hunting and creating advocates, and in spite of everybody telling us that will never work, we pulled it off. And it became a very, very popular TV show that has been the springboard for everything we do now.